Harry's memoir, Spare, he claimed that after his first date with his future wife, Meghan Markle, he went around to a friend's house to watch the animated show Inside Out. And Meghan asked, are you watching cartoons? And he said, no, I mean, yeah, kind of. Well, it looks like Harry can no longer turn to cartoons when he wants to enjoy a little bit of lighthearted entertainment because the cartoons have turned on him. First, it was South Park, and now comes Family Guy. In the South Park episode, we got treated to the worldwide privacy tour, and in this new episode of Family Guy, we see them taking a swipe at Meghan and Harry's lucrative deals and their U.S. careers. We see a couple of characters who are supposed to be Harry and Meghan lying on loungers by a pool, and then a butler walks up to them with a bundle of cash saying, Sir, your millions from Netflix for no one knows what. And then Harry's response is, oh, put it in with the rest of them before Megan says, babe, time to do our daily $250,000 sponsored Instagram post for Del Taco. A rather unhappy looking Harry responds, I shouldn't have left the made up nonsense. Ooh, talk about hitting close to home. Now that last line perfectly captures the degree to which Megan and Harry have certainly backed themselves into a corner. A pretty humiliating corner, actually, that they cannot seem to find their way out of. So what exactly does this tell us about Meghan and Harry's U.S. careers and their brand ever since they started their truth-telling? I mean, soon it's going to be the one-year mark since Harry and Meghan came out on Netflix, resulting in way too many people having to sit through six hours of some very boring content. And then right after the docuseries came out on Netflix, we got Harry's book Spare. It was slightly more nuanced, but it was basically still talking about the same stuff that Harry's family inflicted so much trauma upon him, and he and Meghan just had to run away. And then came all Harry's TV interviews to try to promote that book, all of which felt pretty disingenuous, considering that Harry just kept talking about the same stuff over and over again. And finally, it seemed like he had completely told his truth. We got his side of the story. So we thought, okay, surely they're finished now. They have nothing left to say. Or do they? In February, the global press secretary for Meghan and Harry, Ashley Hansen, told Variety that their vital look-back projects were finished, and she said they would now look forward. So it seemed like Harry and Meghan, after having said what they needed to say, after having shared their truth and been paid a lot of money to do so, it looked like they really were ready to move on, and they were going to do some real work for a change. But no, what came after was an absolute PR assault including that near-catastrophic car chase scene in New York. They were dropped by Spotify, they were referred to as effing grifters by a Spotify boss, and they also had to leave Frogmore Cottage. Next, Harry's Heart of Invictus documentary came out on Netflix, and, well, nobody really watched it. The two of them were papped with incredible frequency, and also there was a lot of talk about the state of their marriage. This year should have been the year of Sussex. It should have been the year when we saw them really define themselves as leaders in the American cultural and political landscape. But instead, we haven't seen that at all. We've seen a couple of people who were stuck in the past, who refused to move on from perceived slights. Instead of Meghan and Harry cozying up to important political forces in the U.S., they've been cozying up to people like the Kardashians. Back in 2020, we really thought they were going to do better than this. We had hope. We thought Meghan and Harry were going to be voices for change, that they were going to, that they would be able to take that royal stardust and use it to help people. Well, obviously, we were wrong. Many people assumed that Harry and Meghan were going to continue with the work of Diana, the Princess of Wales, that they were going to help people whose society often forgets, that they would even be willing to show up in conflict zones just to bring attention to worthy causes. I mean, just think, it was back in 2016, seven years ago, when Harry convinced the U.S. president at the time, Barack Obama, and his wife, Michelle, to appear in that lovely video with the late queen to promote the Invictus Games. It was a moment that seemed to predict the brightest of futures for a man who looked like he was going to have a real impact on the world. But today, we do not see a man who is going to have a positive impact on the world. We see a man who is a shell of who he used to be, who has made an absolute joke out of his life, who is now just a bit of comedy material. And it's not like Harry's motivation to do good has really waned, but instead, his place in the world has changed so dramatically. Would the Obamas even accept his call today? Probably not. So maybe Harry believes himself to still be a committed humanitarian, but his and Meghan's years of anti-palace rhetoric 
and then proving to be mediocre at best as content makers has really messed with their reputations. Because these days, Harry is not mostly known for his charity work. Instead, he has become famous for making a career out of trashing his own family. And so he drove his father and his brother even further away. And now Meghan and Harry are on their own. They got to fend for themselves. And so now they're desperate to figure out a way to keep on making some money to support their lavish lifestyle. And it's that need to make money that brings us right back to this Family Guy episode and that $250,000 sponsored Instagram post for Del Taco. Back in 2020, that would obviously have been a joke, but now it's hitting pretty close to reality. I mean, with Meghan and Harry's money-making options looking increasingly limited, it makes it more likely they're going to have to cozy up to some big corporations. They're going to have to do whatever they can to make a quick buck. This week, we saw Harry show up in Austin for the Formula One as a VIP guest of Mercedes-AMG Patronus team, according to Meghan and Harry's unofficial spokesperson, Omid Scooby-Doo. Interestingly enough, Harry was photographed by Getty standing around with the team's part owner, Toto Wolf, and a bunch of guys wearing polo shirts that were slathered in corporate logos. So might this be a sign of what he's going to do next? Harry is also still, I guess, the chief impact officer for that billion-dollar coaching company called BetterUp. And then back in 2021, Harry and Meghan made a big deal out of, as the New York Times put it, getting into finance. They signed on with the Wall Street firm Ethic as impact partners, whatever that means. So how long is it going to be before we see Meghan and Harry throw caution to the wind and agree to do a paid Instagram post? How long until Meghan and Harry end up in the pocket of some big corporation? How long until we see Harry trying to sell some golf clubs or we see Meghan trying to sell some shampoo? At the rate things are going, it might not be very long. And who else is wondering if Harry may occasionally look in the mirror and wonder to himself, should I have left the made-up nonsense? Did I make the right choice? Well, Harry, probably not, because after all, nobody's ever going to ask Princess Anne to pretend to like a specific kind of dishwashing liquid. And you, what do you think about this issue? Please let me know below in the comments, and we can also talk about the future of Meghan and Harry. If you preferred our video today, don't be afraid to like and share it with anyone else who would enjoy it. And please don't forget to subscribe for updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, and I'll be back to see you tomorrow.